Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a review of one of probably the most unusual watches that I've reviewed on the channel, a bit of an oddity. One that perhaps you've heard of, perhaps you haven't. It's the CWC Meller 72. Does that ring any bells? Well, if you read a lot of Hadinki articles, perhaps it will. They reviewed this watch earlier on this month and I'll leave a link to their article in the description of the video. CWC stands for the Cabot Watch Company and you're forgiven if you haven't heard of them. For the first 20 years that they were in existence, they didn't actually sell to the general public. They supplied exclusively their watches to the British Armed Forces. Now, this isn't my watch. I haven't bought this one for myself, nor was it sent to me for review by the company. This one belongs to none other than Mr. X. Believe it or not, Mr. X is ex-British military himself. He's getting a bit nostalgic in his old age and he picked up one of these Meller 72s for himself. Now there's a clue in the name, this watch is actually a remake of the watch that they supplied to the British Army in 1972. But does this watch have a place in today's market? Is it something you should be interested in and who are its current rivals? Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. While I'm opening the very simple black cardboard box, you wouldn't really want or expect anything from a military reissue, let's talk about price. And as we are on Her Majesty's service today, we are talking Great British Pounds, 449 of them to be precise. Now, if you live outside of the Eurozone, if you're in the States, then you can take the Euro tax back off that, but then you're adding some local sales tax. I reckon that comes in at around 500 USD. Now, 500 USD, not necessarily cheap for a fairly simple watch. I will talk about a number of this watch's rivals later on in the video at various price points, gives you an idea of if you like the look but aren't necessarily convinced by the CWC what else is out there. But for a fairly authentic military reissue, I don't think they're asking too much money. I should probably show you the tiny instruction manual and the three year warranty card. Now, three year warranty is definitely one year over the usual. It's Oris and kind of the expensive Swiss stuff upwards where you get more than two years. So that is certainly appreciated at the price. I won't flip it over for fear of revealing Mr. X's true identity. Talking of Mr. X, he may be a mild mannered janitor and collector of numerous Rolex today, but here he is in the mid nineties. He spent four years in the British army. This was taken in the back of a Hercules transporter somewhere over the Americas. That's all he told me. And on his wrist is a CWC, the military watch that he was issued with at the time. It was a quartz piece unlike this one, which is a mechanical winder. They had moved on to quartz pieces by the time they hit the early 1990s, but clearly this is a bit of a nostalgic purchase for him. Now, I'm not gonna give you the dimensions as I normally would up front for fear that you all run to the hills. It is small by today's standards, not as small as the Hamilton, which is its most obvious rival. Again, I'll talk about that later on. These tonneau style case watches do wear bigger than the dimensions would suggest. I'll put it on my wrist before I tell you the dimensions and you can judge for yourself how it looks on my seven inch wrist. I will show it side by side with a number of other pieces for reference later on. So military watch, military specifications. This is pretty much a remake of the same watch that they used to manufacture in the 1970s, same dimensions and specs, etc. That CWC logo there, very simple. You can see under the triangle indicator at the 12 o'clock, that is a pre-1982 logo. Similarly, the T in the circle there referencing the tritium that would have been on the hands in the indices in those days, but now it is superluminova, so they've modernized it. And the broad arrow there above the six indicating that this is Her Majesty's property. All of these watches were only issued temporarily to soldiers. They had to hand them back at the end of their tenure. And foolishly, Mr. X didn't lose his in the last couple of weeks of service. He handed it back like a mug. So 316L stainless steel case, very, very simple. I do like the finish, brushed throughout. It's almost like a lateral brush, brushed across the mid case here. Mechanical manual winder, smallish crown, unsigned there as well. It could have been doing with making it a little bit larger, I guess, but again, in keeping with the overall dimensions of the watch. That is a piece of domed acrylic crystal. Now, acrylic crystal will scratch, it will scuff, but it will not shatter, and that's why it was specified. And NASA specified acrylic for the Speedmasters back at the similar time period as well, late 60s, when they were sending men into space for that very same thing. In Today's environment, a bit of poly watch and you'll be able to buff any scratches out of this one. Keep it nice and clean, keep it nice and legible. 
Now, NATO strap, perhaps the more observant of you will have noticed already, it's an 18mm NATO with 18.5mm lug width. I'll show you this one, I'll take it off the NATO briefly, it's got the various specifications, the, the codes of the specifications on the back here. 50 meters of water resistance from a press-on case back, those spring bars are welded, so they are not going to crack, you're not going to lose a spring bar. Again, ideal for the purpose when durability and reliability is paramount. Zoomed in on the dial and again it's all about practicality and suitability for purpose. Everything's just printed on here, again the triangle, so that you know which way this watch is aligned. The CWC logo, the T, the broad arrow, everything else just printed on. Now, CWC interestingly have eschewed the kind of full patina look that have been adopted by Hamilton in some of their recent military reissue pieces. There's a slight colour variation on the pips on that double train track around the outer edge. The numerals, the Arabics, are whiter. Those little pips are just a kind of pale yellow-green colour. I'll put the Loom video in now. Super Luminova, as I mentioned earlier on, on the hands and on the indices and on that triangle at 12 there. The Loom is okay. It is not perhaps fantastic, but certainly it is, it is up to standard when compared to the Hamiltons that I have reviewed on the channel recently. So in that sense, perhaps it's a little bit purer than some of the reissues. They're not trying to make it look like an old watch. They're trying to make it look like it came from 1972, but is new old stock rather than something that has seen 50 years of service. Swiss made, obviously, Swiss made down there, the markers either side of the index at six. Now that means it's got a Swiss made movement in it. That movement being a Salita SW210, a manual wind only rotorless variant of the Salita 200 series of movements, which are in themselves clone of the ETA 2800 series of movements. 19 dual hacking and hand winding, roughly 40 hour power reserve, so Tommy would have to remember to wind this one up at least every second day. You can see why they went to quartz in the 80s though, not only were they cheaper, but they're more accurate as well. This one not doing too badly, still perfectly within the stated tolerances at plus 10 seconds per day. Healthy amplitude and beat error is all right, I suppose. So let's get it on wrist then. There it is sitting on top of my seven inch wrist. I'm not a massive fan of NATOs because they usually bulk up a watch. I think they just add unnecessary bulk to a watch. But in this case, the watch itself is so slight and so delicate that the NATO really suits it and it does make it very, very comfortable. And the watch is just supremely legible, isn't it? Along with the reliability and the ruggedness, legibility obviously is a hugely important factor for one of these watches. So what do you think? Does this look too small for me? Does this look ridiculous? Or does it actually suit my wrist quite nicely? 36 millimeters in diameter, 42 mil lug to lug, only 10 and a half mil thick. On the supplied NATO strap, this one weighs in at a mere 50 grams. It really is a little slip of a watch, but I think that adds to the charm. I think it looks good, it's very comfortable, it doesn't feel too small, I don't think it looks too small either. If I show you this watch outside in some natural light, you can see hopefully how well machined that case is. As I said earlier on, very simply done, really nice brushed finish throughout, and you can see how that domed acrylic crystal plays with the light just beautifully still maintaining legibility throughout no problems with that on wrist less than 10 and a half mil thick means the nato strap is not a problem super short lug to lug lightweight you barely know you're wearing this thing at all so let's do some size comparisons then. Let's leave the CWC in the middle and bring in some other pieces that you may or may not be familiar with to give you an idea of some scale. Another military reissue, this time Chinese. That's the Seagull 1963 38mm. So you can see pretty similar in overall dimensions to that one. On the right, it's an SKX, but it's the SKX-013. It's the little guy. And even the little guy is considerably bigger than the CWC. If I swap that out for the, the big guy, this is a 009. You can see much, much, much bigger from the Seiko than the CWC. But like I said, I think that small size really adds to the appeal of this one. 
So what else is there on today's market? These military reissues seem to be very, very popular. I reckon that this watch has three kind of obvious rivals. I've reviewed one of them on the channel already, that being the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical that I looked at earlier on this year. Really nice watch. This is a Joma Shop price. I'll leave links to all of these watches in the description of the video, by the way. 350, that's gray market though, so the warranty isn't gonna be quite the same as if you bought it from a Hamilton dealer. Now, the next choice, also a Hamilton. This is a new model. This is their Hamilton Khaki Pilot Pioneer Mechanical almost identical. Mr. Meller, I mentioned that this was a Meller 72. Mr. Meller, who designed all of these CWC watches in the 70s and 80s, he used to work for Hamilton in the 1960s, who supplied to the British military as well. So it's fairly obvious why there are parallels between these two watches. Now this Hamilton gray market price anyway is similar to the CWC, but it's smaller at 33 millimeters in diameter, and it only features mineral crystal, which I reckon is a bit of a fail. The one last obvious alternative, I think, is one of those CWC watches from the 1970s that did indeed get lost by its original owner and is now for sale on eBay, exactly the same price as the modern version. So I guess it comes down to individual choice. Do you want a brand new, reliable watch with a three-year warranty in modern materials or do you want a watch that has seen some active service but might blow up on your wrist next Tuesday? So definitely a bit of a niche piece, one of the more interesting watches that I have reviewed on the channel this year. I can see why Mr. X bought it, a bit of a nostalgia trip for him. Don't think it's gonna sell in massive numbers, but if you're looking for a left fielder, you've got an interest in military history, then you should definitely check out CWC. So there you have it, the CWC Mellor 72 then. I can't see all of you clutching your credit cards ready to buy one of these as soon as the video ends. It's not that type of watch. I don't think it has the same mass market appeal as the Hamiltons that I talked about, for example, probably because it doesn't have the same brand recognition as Hamilton. But that's not to say it's something that you shouldn't be interested in if you are looking for a, a rugged, no-nonsense, everyday watch that's gonna give you years and years and years of faithful and reliable service. So not just for people like Mr. X who are beginning to lose their hair and think about the glory days then. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.